A couple was inside an SUV when a power pole came crashing down and impaled it. This morning, the two are sharing what it was like to be trapped inside. Another shakeup is on the way at the White House. Another cabinet member is leaving her position. Local astronaut Anne McLean is setting off on her next adventure. She's making her second spacewalk this morning. Five a.m. on our Monday morning. Welcome to Crime Two Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, we were coming off the weekend, getting started <laughs> on a new week. We're all excited. It's Monday, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the weekend's always just a little too short, right? It is never <laughs> long enough, but you know, maybe we can carry in some of that weekend energy over into mm -hmm. today. Why don't we try that? What do you think, Evan Arani? Is that a good idea? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if the forecast is going to help out too much with oh. that, but I, I will try my best to encourage that. I mean, we do have so those showers from over the weekend which brought a lot of unsettled weather with it continuing now into your uh, Monday morning. You can see most of those showers contained to south of I-90, but we're going to see them continue to push farther north. Spokane expecting to see rain by about 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. into the next couple hours. So you can see mainly where those showers are occurring are areas like Othello, Pomeroy. Right now, the Palouse is expected to start to see a good amount of those more moderate rain showers, so heavier rain showers than what they're seeing right now uh, pick up into the coming hours. What we have uh, as far as a wider look kind of shows you that atmospheric river headed over uh, northern Oregon and southern Washington. It's going to continue to push farther north and make its way to the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area within the coming hours. So if you are not seeing rain as you wake up on your Monday, there is a good chance that within the next couple hours or about the next 12 hours, I should say, uh, you're going to. You can see our precipitation chances between now and 5 p.m. The next 12 hours are holding at at least a 40% chance after this hour. We'll jump all the way up to 80 by 9 a.m. Those are those widespread showers that you can kind of see on that satellite radar that are going to keep pushing farther north. We'll have a portion of the afternoon where there is a good chance that, you know, we'll just have some gloomy skies. Uh, but by the time we get to your evening, we're just looking at scattered showers all the way into the night and overnight hours. So here's what we have on that day planner forecast. As far as temperatures go right now, we are going to cool down by a few degrees. We'll get down to about 42 degrees by 8 a.m., 50 degrees by the noon hour, and the afternoon high resting at about 56 with some scattered on off showers. Coming up, we'll be talking about just how much rain we've seen so far this weekend and how much more is expected expected for the remainder of your work week. It is now 5.02. I'll send things over to Cody Crawford for a check of what traffic looks like. Good morning, Cody. Good morning. We're taking a look outside right now and we're seeing normal road conditions for today. So if you're about to start your morning commute at 5.02 this morning, I suggest that you could leave your house right on time. And if you're about to take I-90, you should be able to go 60 miles an hour on both sides of the interstate. That is all the updates I have, but if you have any questions, you can head on over to our website at crim.com. I'll now send it back to Brittany and Jen in the studio. Cody, thank you so much. A couple from western Washington narrowly escaped major injuries, maybe even death. That is after the two were nearly crushed by a power pole. Two dozen power poles fell Friday night along a mile-long stretch of road in South Seattle. Linda and Tom Cook were trapped in their SUV after one of the poles fell right in between them. Linda was able to walk away on her own, but firefighters had to carefully free Tom. It hit almost dead center of the vehicle in between us. If it hits on either side, the driver's side or the passenger side, the roof comes down on one of us. Later today, we could learn what caused those power poles to topple. Police say some areas will be without power for several days. Four way stop signs have been installed in their place there. Seattle authorities say several poles were replaced fewer than 10 years ago. The poles were also just inspected three years ago, and there was no sign that they might break. Engineers are now deciding if they should rebuild the lines in the same way or make changes. Well, they are lucky. I just can't even imagine. And seeing some of their injuries, I mean, I can't imagine how mm -hmm. scary that was, too. You have no idea what's happening. All yeah, right. especially coming from the ceiling. You yeah. have no idea it's coming on top of you. Oh, I can't imagine. Good All thing right. they're okay. Absolutely. Coming up on 504 now, Spokane astronaut Anne McLean is embarking on her second spacewalk this morning. Well, she and another astronaut are outside of the International Space Station updating the systems, and we want to give you a live look this morning. That space walk started a bit early and this morning the two astronauts are updating the space station's overall power system. They'll also expand wireless communications coverage for the station. Now the power update also will be used to supply the space station's robotic arm. That is, this, by the way, is the crew's third spacewalk in less than a month. 
Now, we can't exactly see too close right now, but McLean is wearing the spacesuit with red stripes. The duo will work outside for about six and a half hours. And if you're wondering what a spacewalk feels like, astronaut Nick Haig said it's tough work, but he said it's the equivalent of running a marathon. He said the astronauts are in spacesuits for nearly 12 hours straight, and they only have 32 ounces of water. Now, you may remember last week, Russia's Progress cargo docked successfully at the space station. It was carrying nearly four tons of food, fuel and other supplies. Next week, another cargo ship is setting its sights on the space station. The Cygnus spacecraft will be resupplying the ship. It will launch from Virginia on a two day journey. And later this month, SpaceX's Dragon Cargo also will be making a trip to the crew. But pretty cool to see. You can see if you look straight through, it looks like someone's up there kind of in the middle, on the other there, side. Yeah. yeah. Usually NASA has a couple different there looks. We there we go. Oh, Another look. So cool. And again, all this happens in real time. The technology behind this is just fascinating. Unbelievable. To me. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be checking in again. They're going to be doing this for the next six yeah. hours or so. So we'll be checking in on how that spacewalk is going throughout the program. Well, astronauts in space may be more like us than we think. Astronaut Nick Haig posted these photos online saying a long work and spacewalk prep calls for a pizza party. He said making pizza in space is pretty similar, similar to making pizza on Earth. The only difference is the space station's ovens look a little different. <laughs> and let's not forget the fact that the pizza can float. <laughs> that would be hard. I already just want to like shove a pizza slice <laughs> in my mouth if I'm trying to grab it out of the air floating away. No, no, right? <laughs> oh, but it looks like they're having a good time there. So fun. It is 5.06 now on this Monday, and level three evacuation orders are in place after major flooding in parts of Oregon. People who live in an area south of Portland are being told to leave their homes and seek higher ground. Level three evacuations mean to leave now. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers notified the Lane County Emergency Management of the flooding. The agency reports water is being released from the Dorina Reservoir at historic rates to avoid overflow. It's going up really fast. Just in four hours, it's gone up probably two or three feet. So I'm kind of worried <laughs> since I live right by the river. The Clackamas River also saw some effects. It was just a little more than one foot from flood levels and moving fast. The National Weather Service estimates there will be minor flooding by this afternoon. And in parts of Lebanon, Oregon, firefighters had to rescue two people and a dog. Crews think they were homeless and camping near the river. The water had rise from the uh, flooded river and cut them, basically put them on an island and they were um, just trapped on this little island. Crews had to use ropes and a raft to save one man. They also used a jet ski with a rescue sled to save another man and his dog. They were able to evacuate safely. Oregon authorities found a body inside the home of a former Mouseketeer who has been missing since July. Now, the body was found at the Oregon home of Dennis Day. They've not said how the remains were found, and those remains have not been identified. Day was an original Mouseketeer. He began appearing on Disney's The Mickey Mouse Club during its first season in 1955. Day was reported missing in July after his husband said he stopped visiting him in the hospital. Authorities were told Day was going to visit a few friends and never returned. His car was later found by the Oregon coast. Authorities say there is still an active investigation underway. Washington state leaders are frustrated about the pace of nuclear waste cleanup at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. The cost for that cleanup tripled, but the Department of Energy has proposed $416 million in budget cuts for 2020. That would reduce Hanford's yearly cleanup budget from $2.5 billion to $2.1 billion. Hanford played a key role in the development of nuclear weapons. Some of the site's infrastructure has started to deteriorate, and that includes underground storage tanks and tunnels. Washington leaders say the proposed budget cuts would cause the federal government to fall short on its obligations to clean up that nuclear site. 509 now. If you are flying American Airlines anytime before June, you might want to check if your flight is canceled. The airline is keeping its MAX 737s grounded for one month longer than originally planned. The airline does plan to cancel or reschedule about 90 flights a day. Boeing leaders said last week the company needs more time to finish changes. Those changes are to a flight control system that is suspected of playing a role in two deadly crashes. These delays mean airlines could be forced to park their MAX jets longer than expected. 
Leaders with American Airlines say they canceled the flights in advance so they would have more time to rebook customers. Another member of the Trump administration is out at the White House this morning. Kirsten Nielsen resigned her position as Secretary of Homeland Security. President Trump confirmed the news on Twitter. He thanked Nielsen for her service and named Kevin McAleon as her temporary replacement. Right now, he is the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner. CBS News reports White House Senior Advisor Stephen Miller is behind this move. During her 16-month tenure, Nielsen was criticized for enforcing the separation of migrant families at the border. In March, members of the House Homeland Security Committee drilled the secretary on her handling of the crisis. And as a member of this committee, you're darn right I'm going to hold this you accountable for knowing what's happening at the bottom. Nielsen joined President Trump in California on Friday. She has encouraged Congress to do more to enhance border security. It's not clear whether Nielsen quit or was forced to leave. In a series of tweets, she thanked the DHS employees and told them to keep up a good fight. She will remain as secretary through Wednesday to help with the transition. Well, we are just one week away from tax day. The deadline to file is next Monday, April 15th. The IRS reports 20 to 25 percent of Americans wait until the last two weeks before the deadline to prepare their returns. If you still have not filed yours, the IRS encourages electronic filing. The agency reports online software can help do the math so there are fewer errors. Anyone who is not able to file by next Monday can request an extension. IRS leaders are also warning people to not fall for scams. They say scammers try to trick you into providing your personal information. They add that they do not send emails or text messages, so if you do get either of those, you should know they are not from the IRS and delete them. 5-11 now on this Monday. The championship game is just hours away now. Today, we will find out who will win the title at the NCAA tournament. And country singers were in the spotlight at the ACM Awards. We will bring you some of the highlights. And we saw a pretty rainy weekend and more rain to start off our Monday morning. That means that as we go towards the rest of the week, we could either continue to see that rain or see some changes on the way. I'll tell you which one that is after the break.